welcome to this week's hashtag toe to toe. I'm delighted to say we're joined by three guests this week: Richard Reactor, Dillian White, and Barry Jones. This is like a bumper liner for this New Year's show. Good to see you all. Nice to see you too. Um, first of all, how was all your Christmases? Mine was good. Yeah. Thank you very much. What did you get up to? Did you manage to chill? Just, just chilling with family, relaxing. Nothing, nothing too, you know, exciting. I've seen you on the TV, you've been doing a few interviews, so you've been, you've yeah. been taking over, been, keeping up. Yeah, busy. How was yours? It was all right, relax. I'm usually just a relaxed, cagey sort of aloof person, man, so just take it easy and just chill out. Do you, do you let yourself go and kind of just eat what you like? or? Yeah, yeah, I do, I do, I do, because then it's... People think you're here for what you don't need to diet, then I'm thinking, oh, you know, it's so wrong, because you've got to diet, you've got to get down. Like my last fight, I was too heavy. I've got to lose two stones, so I'm a, I've, I've been conscious in my mind, been in it already. So I was like, mm, you know what, I'm eating, but let me don't overindulge. <laughs> what about you, Barry? Well, luckily... I haven't got a trade for five years. <laughs> the, the last time I've tried to make weight, I got knocked out, so I can eat <laughs> what I want to eat. So I just buy bigger jumpers now, which is fantastic. But that was my Christmas. Lots of eating and lots of playing, so I had a good time. Well, we can see in front of us, um, Richard and Dylan, you've brought your belts in. Great to see. Yeah. Barry, where, I didn't realise it was. I didn't realise it was bring a belt day. I would have brought a belt. Though my belts are probably older than you two. Maybe combined, actually. That's how old. That's how old I am, and my belts are, yeah, as old as me. So, yeah, they might. They, what's that? Seventy. <laughs> <laughs> Not, closer than what you think. Hey, we're older closer than we, what you we're think. We're older than we look. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't got one either. Um, Richard, your British title that you won, yeah. 19th of December at York Hall, a brilliant night. How are you reflecting on that? Oh, it was amazing. You know, amazing night, and we made history. And um, yeah, it was just, it was different because it was the first time I was headlining my own show. How was that? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. It looks easy from the outside, you know. Dillian, I don't know how he does it. He's been doing it over and over again, but I understand, you know, what it takes and, and what it demands of, of a fighter. But it's, but you know, I'm getting used to, I'm getting accustomed to this, this type of lifestyle. So I'm, I'm happy. How, how involved, because obviously you're looking after Richard, how involved are you in kind of his preparation and just like the mental side of things as well? Like you said, you're so used to headlining. You've oh. been there, done it on huge pay-per-view pay shows. Well, we was actually inspiring each other because I was fighting a taller guy and he was fighting a girl off in my height. So we did lots of rounds of sparring, um, you know, and he was pushing me. And I, I pushed him as well. And we, we just kept on speaking to each other. I kept on explaining stuff to him and trying to, and we speak. But, you know, when, when me and Richard speak, we, we have deep conversation. I try and explain things to him. I try and tell him stuff, but when you get in the ring sometime, all the piece stuff people tell you and what you know doesn't matter, you just, you know. Because you know, I told him a lot of things that would have made the fight like, easier, but like I said, it's lots of pressure and lots of things, and it's all good saying things, but when you get to do it sometimes, you just, and the night, it just doesn't come together, you know. But it's a huge test, because headlining a show, it's kind of make or break, isn't it? You either thrive under yeah, that pressure, course. or it affects you and it, and it gets to you. We, we've all, I'm sure, you know, I've been, you, when I was, especially when I was a kid, you, you kids in the gym would be better than you, but then come fight night, mm -hmm. they wouldn't win anything, and you just go, like, and you, and you find out with most good boxers, so the kids, some of the kids who, that you, know, where you train with, they're so talented, but something happens from that, the gym to the to the the crowd scenario, and they, and they freeze or whatever it is. And headlining a show shouldn't be any different, but it is an added pressure, and more so for you because you're not headlining a show against a guy who you should be quite comfortable. You're headlining a show against guys who are more than competitive. You know, that that's the good thing about your learning curve is yeah. you know, your last sort of what, maybe four fights have, have been all against guys who were good enough to beat you if you weren't at your best. Yeah. And we often as well talk about, um, obviously you, you've headlined O2 and all, all over the place, yeah. but the York Hall, I mean, there's something special about the York Hall because everyone's on top of you as well. So I, did you feel the pressure even more there? I mean, to be honest, I, I just kind of, I've learned how to block all of that out. I focus on, obviously, the instructions from my, my corner, my coach. I listen to Dillian White as well in the crowd and everybody else is just silent. I can't hear them. So, but it's... it's it's, it's a different environment in comparison to O2 because it's just closed and compact and you can feel the energy. When people shout, you can hear it. You can hear every, everything going on. You can feel the energy. So I liked it anyway. I liked, I liked the experience. It was, it was really do, you, do you actually hear anybody? Yeah, of course. Do you hear the, the different voices? Course, different voices, you but you just have to learn to oh, just wow. block it out. That's, that's a kind of, it's quite difficult sometimes. Yeah. Because someone's shouting instruction from the left and to the right and there, but it's just a skill. You know, you get, 
you grow and you get used to it like, as time goes on. Because I never used to, I used to get maybe just one voice like, as an amateur more than as, as a pro. There's usually bigger, bigger, bigger spaces in between the the ring, but. I, I, you'd pick one voice, and it wouldn't be the, always the voice you wanted to hear. Did you know who it was? No, no it was just some, you, just one voice would just stick out for some reason. So I wonder whether, you know, because the York Hall's very, almost like amateurs, because it's very in, intense and very closed up that if you heard just one particular noise and zoned in on it subconsciously, or whether it was a variety of voices, because ideally you want to hear the corner screaming. I just listen to my corner team. I, you know, I just try and listen to my corner team. I have a few people, a few family members and stuff, um, my team members, but I listen to my corner. I don't listen to what um, Mark and my assistant coaches and stuff are telling me, you know. Is that the last, like Mark and, and Zab, they, I, just listen, I heard everything they were telling me, but because I was a little bit unfit, well, I was a, a lot unfit, but you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was hearing things, but I couldn't do a lot of what they were telling me, but I just, just listened to them too, I just listened to them too. I pick up bits and pieces from around because good thing about having people different people in the arena, you hear things and that they might see that you can't and that see or you, know, you might not see. So you have to listen to it and pick the information up and think, OK, that makes sense. So it's, it's, it's difficult. Well, as we're talking about that, I mean, that was the last time we saw you, wasn't it, in, in Saudi mm -hmm. in early December? And it was a new experience well, for all of us, really, wasn't it, being yeah. there and, you know, in the yeah. open air as well? How did you find it? I enjoyed it. I thought, I thought it was all right, you know, but I, I've travelled. I've been travelling for a long time go to different countries, different circumstances. I don't really get phased by stuff like that. You know, um, I fought in America before, you know, and I'm used to, I like going to different countries and, and accepting different cultures. And, and I can get on anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere that really drop me, I will find a way to survive. So, but I think it was good. It was very accommodating. The people was nice, we were safe. The you rain. know, um, it rained. Yeah, we, we brought the rain with us. Yeah. That's that's a major blessing for the desert, for it to rain. You know, so you know, Brit, we, us Brits bring the rain wherever we go. So yeah. Well, right, let's get stuck into some of these questions. Harry says, um, Dillian, what's the next most realistic fight for yourself? Um, probably Pavic and Andrew Ruiz are utter willing. Those are the three guys on my hit list. I would love to fight one of the champions, but they're tied up, and it's a lot. Of politics and stuff going on, but realistically, Povetkin, former Olympic gold medalist, former world champion, only lost to Joshua and um, Klitschko, utter willing, put up a good effort against Tyson Fury, the linear heavyweight champion of the world, and Andrew Ruiz just beat Anthony Joshua, just lost Anthony Joshua's show. Any one of them that won, won a fight, I'm up for it. Barry, who would you like to see him in with? Um, you'd like to see him fight for the title, now, to be fair, yeah. but that's not going to happen. <laughs> you know that it's going to be it's going to be a while yet. But I, I think the Pavekin fight's a good fight. I think stylistically, it's a good fight to watch, and also he's been a champion as well. So again, you just gain a bit more experience. Yeah. Without being too stupid about it, you, almost when you beat the fight, you almost take something from him. I agree. And, and it becomes your own, doesn't it? I agree. It? I had seven amateur fights. I beat all these guys that's had hundreds, two hundred, seventies, fifties. So. When I beat them, I just feel like, OK, I just beat an Olympian. I just beat an... Um, it's not just the fact that he's 26. Like Rivas, it wasn't the fact that he's 26 and 0. You know, I beat a guy who beat Andy Ruiz, who went to the Olympics, who was a, a Cuban guy, you know what I mean? A Colombian guy. So for me, that felt like a piggy bank and his experience. So I, I'm, I'm above that guy. I beat that guy. Who, I've been boxing for 11 years. You know? And also, you would beat, you would, you would fight Pavek and you would probably go in a favourite, to yeah. be fair. Which, which you wouldn't have said that a few years ago, to be honest. But it's, I think for you now, it's not who you beat, it's how you beat them. Yes. I think that's it. You, know, you want to compare how he beats him compared to how, how Anthony yeah. Joshua beat him. And I think that for Forces the public to yeah. want to see you fight those champions. If you can do a better job or just as good a job as the champion did, then the public will start to say, "Well, why aren't he fighting him?" That's a really fair point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've bought in the WBC belt. Yes. Is that a bit of a dig at? Well, it, it, you know, it's um, it's not really dig well, at WBC. Am I just into it? It, it is. You know, it is. The, look, it's the same belt as Deontay Wilder. Have it says WBC World Champion. It's the same belt. Very different between me and Deontay Wilder is. Is one stand for um, Royal Dam Coward Dam Championship? That's <laughs> different. I'm the Royal WBC. Red. Fact of the matter is, I've beaten more top 10 and top 15 contenders than he had, and he's been the champion for many years, you know. Fact. And, and it's just fact. Just the, the fact of the matter is, I'll fight anyone and he won't. How are you dealing with. Um it's just a constant waiting game for you, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're just trying to... I've asked you this before, but it just keeps going on and on. And I think they're just trying to phase me out and hopefully I'll get demotivated, I'll get flat and I'll just 
give up on it, but you That's, know, is that going to happen? No, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm improving because, as you guys can see in the last fight, I wasn't my best, but I was still able to beat someone who was in shape and a top contender. And I lost one round out uh, 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 of 10 rounds. I was still able to, that's so stubborn and all driven I am. I'm still able to graft out. You've seen fights where I've not been shaped before, where I've had injuries and I graft out victories. I'm grinding, so I'm just adding different pieces and different things to my game. You've seen fights where I'm in shapes and I'm sharp and in these fights where I've just been rough and just grinding them out. So I'm still learning, still what, learning. What have you made, Barry, with the situation with the WBC? Well, What's your it's, on it? it's, I, I understand it could, the, way the, the way the Wilder Fury fight finished there. Yeah. That had to be a rematch. Yeah. The fact that it's dragged on so long and, and with, with Dillian being a... How long have you been the number one contender? For, 800 days. It's, it's, a, it's it still yeah. is number one. Yeah, and, and no, and no, but I think the most important part for you is, uh, psychologically, is just put a full stop for the last, or whatever it's been, all the, all the, yes. all the stuff yes. you've had going on, just put a full stop under it. Yes. It's done and dusted now, mm -hmm. and just move on from there. I think, you know, because physically you'll get into shape. That's easy. Yeah, but, yeah but mentally, you gotta be careful. You don't hold that back up in your mind about no, no, I no. should be this far ahead. I should be here now, because, because otherwise that will hold you back, and and and, and, yeah. and mentally you won't be in the right place. And that's why I just give the three names that want to fight. I don't want to just. Yeah. I can fight. I can make good money and have big nights fighting some random odd jobs here and there, but the three names that just give it up contenders. And I came out the ring inside and said, Eddie, get me one of these three fights. You know, I didn't say, oh, I need another warm up because I've been in a bad place. I said, no, get me one of these three fights, you know? And so to be I'm honest- you want to be back headlining pay-per-view again, because again, in Saudi, it was a bit of a different experience for you again, because you'd gone back on the undercard. Yeah, you know, it, it was even, I didn't really think about the undercard. I, I needed to get out. I didn't fight for a long time. I, I was in a, I've been in a hole and then I was thinking to myself, you know what, I don't want to end my year like this. The call was three weeks notice. Marius Wack was eight days notice. Wack was training, he was meant to fight November something against the Chinese heavy, I can't remember what his name is. You were quite is. hard on yourself after, after the fight. I was because I want to, I know how good I am, I know how good I should be, I know how good I can be, and I know my level. But also after it finished and I had a break and I think about it, I thought to myself, I did all right considering what was good, most people wouldn't even have been able to even fight because I didn't know the, the, the outcome till the day before the fight. It didn't make no difference. I already, you know, I was in the hole for months. <laughs> right, let's move on to you, Richard. Um, Timmy wants to know, um, we've just spoken about your performance yes. on the 19th of December. What's next for you? I mean, there's a lot of talk, I guess, about Coley, but... There's, um, there's a few options. Obviously, being a champion, I'm, I'm obligated to fight my mandatory. There's uh, two other cruiserweights that are fighting for that position, so we can we can defend against them. There's, I'm ranked fourth under the WBA. We can have a look at that rankings. You know, we could see if we want to progress in them and fight somebody there. Um, and yeah, the, obviously a Coley. There's other big fights ladies. there as well. Yeah, there's there's loads of big fights to be honest. But we're just ready for whatever. I've never had a problem with fighting anybody. Uh, you can ask Dillian, my management, any person they said that should, you know, do you think, do you want to fight this guy? I'll say yes straight away because I actually believe that I'm the best. I even call he's the biggest fight. <coughs> that's a, that's a, yeah. the smoke we want. Of if course, we can beat course. him, then we get his real title shot. What's the plan? What's the plan for Richard? Who would you like to see him in with? Oh, I think he, he's a lot of voluntary defence. His last three, four fights have been high pressured fights. So I'd like him to have a voluntary defence against a road level opponent, someone who is good level, but you know, it's coming to the season. Someone who's going to give him a few rounds and who's going to show him different different things in the ring. Someone who's going to teach him a few things, make it difficult like for who? him. Like who? Well, there's lots of guys that, you know, we're going to look at the top 15 cruiserweight, some pick someone out. You know, I haven't really thought about it yet. You know, obviously, the British guys you could fight, but th there's no point fighting like the likes of Luke Watkins and those guys, you know. Um, I think he would just get him a run out, possibly, I don't know, I have to look and see, you know, I have to look and see. Barry, who would you suggest? Well, I, I, I see you mentioned Luke Watkins. I think, you know, this Dion Juma's a good fight, and of course, and there's, there's a, lot, a lot of good fighters out there, yeah. Joe Waits. You know, there's, there's Jordan Thompson as well, who's been out yeah. injured, he's back, a big guy. Moment. I think the, I, I was going to say the in worldwide it's, it's in a little transitional period because yeah. some of the champions have moved up and you know some of them maybe just on on, the, on their sort of way down and, and so there's a few vacant titles there so you know it's a really good division but it's maybe not the division it was you know two years ago and time is everything in sport to get Absolutely. it the right time but but domestically 
I think it's really, really, because you've got some good guys, mainly you've beat most of them, to be fair, who are very competitive you know, and will give everyone a hard fight. And you've had hard fights. Yeah. And you've had close fights. But so you should. What, what do you feel like you need to work on? <coughs> it's just, um, just relaxing a bit more and um, just keeping it, keeping it nice and simple, really. I think, um, you know, I haven't showed the best of me. You know, a lot of people rant on about me because they see me in the gym, but obviously being doing it in the gym and doing it on, on fight night is two different stories. And once I get that, once, I trans, trans, um, once, the, once you see that transition with me, trust me, these guys are not going to have a chance. But Dillian, that, that's all about, I guess, experience, isn't it? Getting the ring time, getting the opportunities, and, and just over time, relaxing and yeah. being comfortable. And this is why I said I'd like to get him, you know, another... I'd like to get him another three fights and then step him up to, to, to a real title, hopefully, you know, obviously. Like you say, he does stuff good in the gym. I've been sparring him for a long time and he gives me a lot of problems. He does stuff in the gym, you know, but... It's the fight, he needs experience. And that's why I'm thinking maybe someone, like Luke Watkins is a good fight, but then get him another fight, another fight, then let him fight the likes of Lawrence Akoli and then um, fight for a world title. You know, and, and that's one hell of a career for how long he's, he's been a pro, you know, so. But I'm just trying to think, like, maybe I'd like to get him a comeback fight, because he's going to be off for a while, and then get him to it's, fight. It's, it's well hidden with the, the black. Yeah. Cast is it? What, yeah. what is it? What has happened? So um, basically, I, I dislocated um, metacarpal, a few metacarpals, and um, fractured it. That was pretty early in the fight as well. So I was, I was in. What round agony. was that? Third, third round. Was it? Yeah, I was in. Punches injury. <laughs> yeah. Big punches. This is, you know, it comes with a package. So, you know, is that when you throw that right over the top? Do you catch yeah, on the top of the head? Right is it? The top, yeah. It's kind of land the kind of skull. Yeah. Area, you know, so how long do you think you'll be out for? Couple months, three months, four months. And then it's all about rehabilitation yeah, rehab. and getting back on track. Yeah, Best of luck with that. Um, Andy wants to know, Dillian, how do you see a fight with Wilder going? Um, with me Not and Wilder. Listen, you see, a lot of people get intimidated and get scared by Wilder by the things he says and the way he behaves and the way he carries himself. But I don't. I'm not scared of him. And like I said, people go, oh, but he's knocked out this one of guys. I said, listen, if, if you're in the same way different as someone and you're scared of them, go and get a job. You know, you can't be scared of these guys. And, and um, I've seen it, the behavior that he does and the things he said, like he wants to kill people and all that. That stuff means nothing to me. From where I come from, I know I was brought up and the things I've faced in my life. That, that means nothing to me. I know sometimes when people are insecure, they say over the top things to try and scare. That's how even, um, you see it time and time again, guys, say things because they're nervous. They're trying to hide something deep inside of them. So they try to be overly, you know, with me, what you see is what you get. I don't care. I'll say what I feel like saying and do whatever I feel like doing. That's all the talking. What about in the ring? How, how do you beat him? It'd be hard beating him, especially early doors, because early doors, he'll try and be, he'll try and move a lot and try and be tricky and be cagey. But if he can take his right hand away, which as a fighter, as Barry will tell you, I would say it's easy for normal people to think, oh, it's hard to take his right hand away. But as a fighter, you know what to do. And then you know, you look at these guys and you think, OK, he's got power, he's fast. But I always find a way. In all of my fights, I find a way to damage these guys. Even though one fight I lost, I find a way to hurt these guys. And I'm very good at analysing and looking at this and I think, OK, you made this mistake, you made that mistake. I think with Deontay Wilder, you just got to stay on his, um, stay on his, his right side and just keep hitting his body, you're going to be able to fight him at range and close. You know, a lot of people think if you fight him at range, it's dangerous, but as a fight, you, you can fight someone taller than you at range and still use the range against them. So I know what to do. Obviously, I'd have to be in shape. I know I'd have to train hard, but I know what to do. And I believe if it's a shootout and me and him start slugging it, then do, do you I think, stand very good chance of knocking him out. Do you think you could take his right hand? Could you take that power? I've taken many right hands in my time. It's not, know, it's not something to be proud of, but... See, I, 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 I think the biggest thing with, with Wilder, which you've shown, to, he, listen, he doesn't learn from his mistakes. He, he boxed Ortiz the first time, he wasn't boxing great, but got, got the equaliser and knocked him out. The second time, you think he would have learned from that and started faster. But no, he gets outboxed even more. 
but then still finds the punch to finish the fight. It only takes a few seconds. It, it does, but what I mean, but he hasn't learned from that. I wonder that with, with the Fury fight coming up, will he do that again? Will he not? Will he, you, know, you think you have to start faster with Fury? Yeah. I think with, with, with you, you said about training hard. I think with Wilder, I think it's it's so much mental because you have to keep that focus yes. 100% because you switch off for a second. And if you catch with that right yeah. hand, however good you can take a punch, yeah, no, you, all you big guys no, can of punch. Course, of but, course. He, but he is, does have a little bit of a special because no, he's so long and lucid. When that right hand goes, he, it builds up the velocity he throws and it's hard, hard to but take. But like Luis Ortiz, what's great up until seven round, looked in great shape and then he just stood there. Well, he's 75 years of age. That's Give the him problem. a break. This is the problem. No one knows how old he really is. This is the really problem is. because <laughs> if someone is teeing you up, out of the fear and natural reflexes, you move or you get your hands up or you, you throw something. He just stood at the end of the punch, you teed him up, so at the end of the punch, and then, okay, you don't want to move. Why do, you, that. why do you think you haven't faced him yet? Because, as Barry would tell you, as fighters, you look at fighters and you think, you know what, I'll beat this guy. I'll beat this guy, but you know what? This guy is, is a nightmare. This guy, it will cause problems. This guy, his mindset, his mentality, the way he's been chasing me, the, the way he is, um, and he's researched me before, he knows my background, he's seen me, he's watched. Him, you think? He, of course he's avoided me, 100%. If people can say whatever they want, oh yeah, this and the other, we've offered him career high money when he wasn't making no money. We the, offered him 50 million, million the, dollars. The difference is though, is if you're getting paid 50 pounds to box somebody you, you know you're gonna yeah, beat. Of course. But then a hundred pound to box someone who's really good. It's a no brainer, isn't it? You're gonna take the fifty pound all day long. You you you'll, you'll take a little bit less to, to keep my, my, my keep biggest the problem is Barry. He's saying he's the best, he's the hardest puncher. He's saying, I'm garbage, I'm this and the other, he he will kill me, he'll beat me with one hand tie behind his back. If if that's the truth, then I've been your manager for a million years. Fight me, fight me. I don't and, know. And, and get the job done, and then that's it, and move on. I think the problem we have with the sport, as good as it is, as, as, as the beautiful sport it is, being um, on whatever, I don't know, in, in and out is too much of it, but a mandatory is there for a reason, yes. to keep an order and how things work, and you build up to get, so if, you, if you're a mandatory f f forever, what's the point in playing the system exactly. if you don't get your shot? That, that's the only disappointing part you of know, it. You um, know, to WBC America Suleiman, they've been trying, to position me, but it's Deontay Wilder who keeps avoiding it and keep kicking it down the road. Like, um, will it happen? Do you think? He's gonna get past Fury. How does he that get past go? Fury? Actually, Graham yeah. wants to know Fury or Wilder. How does it go? You know, it's a tricky fight because they both know each. The first fights is always a bit cagey. Second fights, you know each. Other. One who think Deontay Wilder will start a bit faster and start piling the pressure on. I want to think Tyson Fury would be a lot more confident to think I've taken your best punches and I got up. Yeah. And even after knocking me down in the last one, I got up and won the rest of the round. So I give the edge to Tyson Fury, you know. And I would say Tyson Fury is more likely to fight me more than Deontay Wilder, but he's also turned in a fight with me before, so I don't really... Would you rather out those two? I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't think none of them is in a rush. I don't, think, I, don't think none of, I don't think none of them is in a rush to fight me anyway, so... But... Obviously, you know, I think Deontay Wilder is probably the easiest one to beat, I think, you know. But Tyson Fury also ain't the biggest a puncher, so yeah. it's 50-50. Richard, how do you see that rematch going? Mm, it's a tricky one. But, you know, to be honest, I'm leaning towards Tyson Fury. I think he's going to do it this time. And funnily enough, they actually called me to, to spar Tyson Fury, yeah. But obviously, because of my hand, yeah. couldn't couldn't go up. But that would have been a great experience. But I, I'm leaning to Tyson Fury. I think he'll be a bit more serious in the way you know he boxes and stays disciplined throughout the fight. I think all that showboating and stuff like he switches off, and that's how he got himself put down a few times. I think if he was serious and conducted himself properly in that fight, he would have been the champion, the world champion now. Do you think as well, though, um, like, like you just said, I mean, F Fury got up from, from that pump, I mean, a bit like a zombie, but he got up. Do you think that will mentally affect Wilder as well, that he knows that? Well, it, I think it will in, in many ways, because he's always thought, if all i got to do is catch you. If I catch you, you go. And he sort of did go. He, he sort of right, he, he, but he got up. And I, I think on the night, because I was there, I was ringside, now, on the night, the change in, in Wilder's face, because yeah. he was sort of literally doing all that stuff like I've done him, and it looked like he did do him. And... and and then he sort of went, oh, 
need a plan B now. Hang on, what's going on? No, and then Fury went out and, and would have won the round except for the knockdown because yeah. he boxed brilliant. But also, he knows he, still, he knows he can hurt. He put him down twice. The, f the first knockdown was, was was a bit of a soft one, but he knows he can hurt him. So, like uh, as Dillian said, he should start faster. No, listen, I can't give this guy a big lead because I think Fury boxed really well. And all that showboat and stuff, and he, then he gives you opportunities to knock him out, you're right. But I think that's part of his makeup. Yes, yeah. He can't be the fluid you know, the, 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 you know, boxer he is. I think with Tyson, you have a, a, a loose plan, but he literally thinks on his feet. He's a bit of a maverick, I think. So you'll make loads of mistakes, but do some absolutely brilliant things at the same time. Yeah. It's if you can catch him and he's making those uh, mistakes. I, I think part of the biggest problem for Dante Well is he's not a good body puncher. So he's never thought if, about if it. He was, he throw, if, he? if he was wearing the body down and knocked him down later, if he wouldn't have been able to get up, but it just you can shake head punches off. Body punches you don't shake off. If he had pressed him and started working his body early, if he's not a lot, just dig him the body hard here and there, he wouldn't have got up in the later rounds. But there's loads of things. You know, he didn't cut the ring off, he followed him around the ring and, and yeah. sort of was just hypnotised by him and in many ways. There's no way you knock someone down and then lose the rest of the round. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> and he, he tells me he got up and buzzed him all over the place in the last round. Um, it really is fascinating. Um, Final question to you, Richard, because yeah. we have touched on a Coley, but we have to ask you a little bit more. Um, Glenn Page wants to know, uh, do you think um, you beat a Coley now or you need a few more fights? I know you said you'd probably like to see him with someone like a Luke Watkins mm. and then maybe in a Coley, but what do you think? I believe I beat him now. How? Just, just find a way, you know, like sometimes I don't, you know, I keep it simple. I don't like to complicate things. Just go in there and do the best that I can, but my will, I feel my, my heart is, is bigger than most of these fighters. I can take a, a shot anyway, so I'm not worried about the power. It's just me landing a shot at the same time. If I land a shot, yeah, the fight is done. But it's That's a fight that so many people I know would love to see. Um, best of luck with the wrist Thank and you. the recovery. Dillian, watch this space. Looking forward to seeing who you're going to be fighting next. How long, how long do you think when, when you're looking to get I want to get out. April, mid-April, it'll be fine. You know, that's obviously, that's what we're speaking to Eddie about. So, let's see. Let's see, you know, I think mid-April, 18, something like that, that'd be great. That'd be great. Give me enough time to get ready as well. Obviously, I started training. I'm ready. I'm just waiting for him to come back from wherever he is, another meeting, and get the ball rolling. But I'm always ready to fight. Listen, I just need a date and an opponent, and I'm, I'm ready to fight. Wherever I just want to fight. I'm get, I'm not getting any younger. I just want to, I just want to fight, fight, fight. I don't care about nothing. I just want to fight, fight the best. Win, lose, or draw. What's people gonna say? Oh yeah, you lost them. So what? I There's no the doubt best. the hunger's still there. Yeah, no, no, no. I just want to fight, man. You know, I just want to fight. And I enjoy it. Without, but without people know me. Tell you, boxing keeps me balanced. <laughs> get Dillian in the ring. That's um, right. <laughs> Barry, don't fancy getting back in the ring? No. <laughs> I wasn't very good the first time round. I don't oh, fancy doing it again, nah, to be fair. Barry, 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 Barry doesn't give himself enough credit. He's one of the world champions that yeah. everyone seemed to have forgotten. Barry was if a, I was a heavyweight. He was a very, very technical fighter, you know. He was a very good fighter, but just... Te technically I, I, boring. Let's, let's move on from me. Let's move on from me. Unfortunate circumstances, but I think you should get more credit. I'm not saying it's because you're here. Yeah, I've always said this, I think you should get more credit than, than you get, to be honest. We'll, talk, we'll all come back next week. We'll all wear Barry we'll, Jones T-shirts. We'll all just have That's a brief hug Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure. Don't forget to, uh, these guys will be joining us on the podcast later today. That will be available on iTunes later on. But thank you very much. We shall see you next week. Sky Sports. Feel it all.